Hey, good luck with that. If you've been near a newspaper in the last few days, you'll know that ex-England manager Sven-Goran Eriksson has been on the front pages once again in light of the release of his new autobiography. Well, we caught up with him yesterday to talk about not only his love of the beautiful game, but of his love of beautiful women too. Few football managers have courted more controversy in their career than Sven-Goran Eriksson. After five years at the helm of the England squad, Sven was considered one of the most successful England managers of all time. His steely, expressionless demeanour in the face of triumph or defeat on the pitch earned him the nickname Iceman. But his private life and high-profile affairs caused a media frenzy, making front-page news on an almost daily basis. His autobiography offers a glimpse into the life and times of one of the most enigmatic men in football history. Sven, welcome. It's lovely to have you here. Um, Thank we you. We were chatting a few moments ago um, because of the sort of fallout from the book in, in this country. Why you would do it in the first place? Mm. You have had a hugely <clears throat> successful and very lucrative football career, which you continue to have, so you don't need the money. Why, why write the book and have the controversy? Well, I always thought that one day I would make a book, uh, write a book, and now it's done. Why? Uh, because it's been said, written a lot about me in football and about my private life, especially in this country. Mm -hmm. Too much. Some, some of it true, other things not true. So I thought, if I'm going to write that book, uh, take with everything. Have you been surprised by the reaction to sort of the elements of your private life in the book and the sort of fallout after that? Well, uh, maybe, maybe not, because I'm, I'm used to it in this country. Mm. Uh, so, not that surprised, but anyhow, what's in there is what I consider the truth. Mm. And yes. then if uh, people want to believe it or not, that's another question. Was and, there a uh, temptation for you to just write a book about football? I thought about it, but um, because they, they have uh, handled my private life during so many years, and I never said anything about it. Mm. So at least get it right. Well, because that's the thing. You were always terribly private. You were very quiet about your private life. You know, sort of yeah. the elegant gentleman in the background who had a hell of a love life. There was no question about that. <laughs> but but you, never, you, never, you never spoke about it. And so it seems unusual that you've been so honest and so open. Well, probably it's unusual, but uh, I'm not the England manager anymore. I don't work in this country anymore, so why not? But it's also laid you wide open for some of the people that you've, you've mentioned in the book to have a go back. Um, but that's, that's not a problem. You don't mind? No. Right. Well, I would. I mean, I, I'm looking at what Ulrika, and you, you were actually quite, quite nice to Ulrika in the book. But, but this weekend in the newspapers, did you read what she said in the papers? No, this I haven't. I heard about it. <laughs> so I'm going to read some of this back to you because, because as I said, you know, you, you are a gentleman who has had a very successful uh, love life. Um, and, uh, and you say that there but have been people high-fiving you. More important is the football. Yeah, I know it's the football, but unfortunately, you, you know, as we said, you know, that's this, a little bit overshadowed. Yeah. But Ulrika said in the weekend, sex with Sven was an ordered and functional as an IKEA instruction manual. I heard about that. Yeah. Uh, and she, she said, devoid of passion, he had all this power and money, yet he was the weakest man I've ever met. OK. Do you what do you say to that? Yeah. No, I don't say anything to that, because I have written the book, and uh, what's in there, that's my true things. Uh, and I try to tell in that book what happened. Mm. But, but you and, say... Uh, you... And then if people have a problem with that. I can't really do very much about that and I don't want to go on. Uh, this is what I... But you must, you must think, I mean I know certainly you know, from most gentlemen's point of view that, uh, that when something like that is written you think well you know the, the one thing you w want to be seen as a successful f football coach, which you obviously are, but it's also quite nice to be a successful lover as well. <laughs> well I don't have really big comments about that and uh, if she wants to say that, okay. Doesn't hurt. That's, that's not my problem. No, it doesn't hurt at all. You don't feel betrayed by it in any way? No, 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 no. That's her problem. It's not my problem. Okay. And what about, what about, I mean, I know that, you know, there, there are areas you don't want to talk about, but I mean, it is in the papers. It's, it's you know, it's what's selling the book. Um, and, that, and that's the relationship with, with Nancy. 
um, and uh, and say, saying of her, you became tired of her. She was demanding. I mean, that's one of those things. It's almost like poking a big stick into a hornet's nest. <laughs> well, that's a relationship went on long time, too long, probably. No, mm. for sure, too long. Uh, but it was that it was, and uh, I. I have told a lot of things in the book about that relationship as well. Mm, and didn't you but think, uh, when you were telling those many things? Many things in a good way. Yes, I, yes, of and you always do, actually. When you write about the ladies, it's, it is in a nice way, apart from the well, odd thing of. you said about Nancy, but, but it, it's just, it, it seems very different than when they then get their response, that it's, it's a little more fiery. Okay, uh, maybe, yeah, Nancy is fiery. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, it's up to them what mm. they want to... Uh, to talk about or what they want to answer. When you became England manager, I mean, the pressure must have been immense on you. Did you feel that? I loved it. The yeah. pressure, yes, of course. A lot of pressure because I'm uh, Swedish. That was one thing. Uh, you have to win every football game and things like that. A lot of people and a lot of people in the press, they, they didn't like to see a Swedish guy being the manager of England. Mm. Um, but um, we did a lot of good things mm. with England. Were, were, were you ever, ever? I mean, this, um, back to. Uh, but this is about football, so good. don't worry. But it is. It's, a, it's from Ulrika again. I have to say. Um, uh, Sven told me he found being England manager boring. Um, said that he was bored of only playing one game every month, sometimes less. The FA were paying him millions to be bored. In my opinion, he was on autopilot. No, it's not true. I can tell you that. I was never bored to be the England manager. I wanted more games, yes, but uh, the job is that you have games, 10 every year. Mm. I knew that before and bored, no, I loved it. It was uh, like a big, big dream and the biggest job in the world. Proud every day I had that job. You speak very highly actually of David Beckham in the book and you say how much you admired his professionalism. Yes. Because he had, the, I mean, he sort of was more than a player, really. He had that spotlight on him, also that media spotlight. Yeah, if anyone has a spotlight on him, that's David Beckham. Yeah. Whatever he does, whatever he, wherever he goes, people around him, uh, everywhere. And uh, everyone loves him. He's probably the biggest sport personality in, yeah. in the world, yeah. ever. Well, that seemed to be something that Alex Ferguson had a problem with in his book because uh, he said the, he's the only player he managed who chose to be famous and he had to go for Manchester United because he was bigger than the manager. So what do you want me to answer on that? <laughs> Did you ever feel that he was bigger than you? Probably was bigger than me, but I didn't have any problem with that. Uh, absolutely not. He was great for England. He was a very good captain. He was very professional. So, perfect. And, and did, did you ever feel, because this is something else that was quite big a couple of weeks ago in, in, in uh, Sir Alex's book, that, that, um, that his personal life got in the way of, of his playing? No, absolutely not. You never sensed that. And uh, it's to admire David Beckham, because he can divide his private life, his business life, with his professional uh, football life. Mm. And he always did it. There were never any talks about his... Uh, private life, business life, when he was in camp with England. Mm. That was football, football, football. And um, that's to admire. What made you so successful? Because reading the book, when you were younger, as a statistician, you'd be working things out on the, on the floor with bits of food with your <laughs> friends. Um, is, that, is that what it is? Is that what it takes? It takes someone who can, who can be a good statistician. Well, I've always been obsessed with the football, of course, since I was a young boy. <clears throat> As I said before, my dream was to be a big international football player. It didn't happen. Then I got the chance to become a coach very early. I stopped playing when I was 27 and started coaching. And uh, after a couple of years, it just went on. Mm. You must be lucky to be at the right place in the right moment as well. And I was that. And then, um, I had a wonderful life, coaching, oh, much oh. better than a player. And what about now? Do you feel like you're in the right place now? I'm in China. Yes. <laughs> and uh, so Nancy's it's... probably thinking you're in the right place. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. 
<laughs> but uh, I like it very much. I've been there now for five months and uh, want to take my team, our team, to Champions League next, next year. That's a big uh, mission. Mm. And uh, uh, you're very happily settled with a new partner? A, a partner yeah, yeah everything. Dancer. Life is fine. Everything is but good? But life was always great. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm not complaining at all. I, I had a beautiful life and uh, I hope to have it many more years. Well, you've been very honest about you it. You have been, thank you. And this is, this is the book here, My Story. And we should point out that there is a lot about football in there. There is. Of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> it should be. Yeah, quite right. And that's probably the most interesting things. To if, you, if, you take, <laughs> if you take away the tabloids in England. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Nice to see nice you. Nice to see you. Thank you. Well, if that wasn't enough for you, Nancy Delolio joins Eamon and Ruth with her side of the story on Friday. I can't wait. I know. Uh, still to come, we find out if Marion opts for Faye's fashion advice or takes yours in Takeover the Makeover. That's after the break. <laughs>